Hey Weekly, I'm Andrew Norris. And I'm Whitney Jones. Our top stories this afternoon. Are you thinking about buying a new car? You might want to rethink your decision as the Prime Minister has made an important announcement. And University of Lincoln alumni takes us around Beijing, which is in lockdown due to the coronavirus. Coming up in the programme, we'll be talking to the campaign group who are celebrating LGBT history. <laughs> Our top story this afternoon on LSJ Weekly. We all know climate change is a serious topic and governments around the world have been meeting to debate how to reduce the world's emissions. But what effect will this have on normal people? Well, I went to a local car dealer to explain the proposed changes. Every year, the UN hosts an event dedicated to talking about climate change. This year's event, COP26, was held in Glasgow on Tuesday and Boris Johnson made a very surprising announcement. He promised that the UK would ban sales of new petrol, diesel and hybrid cars by 2035, some five years earlier than the previously announced rule by Theresa May in 2017. The surprising part about the new ban is that hybrid cars will also now be banned under the new legislation, meaning that customers will only be able to choose from cars powered by electricity or hydrogen. But why have the government decided to ban petrol, diesel and now hybrid cars? The answer can be found in the amount of pollution created by traditional vehicles powered by internal combustion. Both petrol and diesel engines produce the harmful gas nitrogen oxide, which can cause serious respiratory issues in high concentrations. Diesel-powered cars produce the most nitrogen oxide emissions, and they usually offer lower outright performance, but better fuel economy. Next up are petrol engines, which traditionally give better performance, but have lower nitrogen oxide emissions and lower fuel economy. Hybrid cars were designed to bridge the gap between petrol and diesel engines by adding a battery and electric motor to petrol engines in order to provide better fuel economy and therefore lower emissions. So with hydrogen and battery powered cars looking to become the new normal, I've come to a car dealership in Lincoln to find out about electric cars. Well, I've, I've been a driver of an electric car for a couple of years now. Uh, I've been on quite long journeys on the, with them. I uh, had to charge at rapid charges at motorway services and things like that. And I love them. I think they're brilliant. Um, I find that um, it's just easier to just get out of the house and go. Electric cars can use two forms of propulsion to power their electric motor. Hydrogen cars use a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen, and as a result, the only emission is water. Meanwhile, the most commonly known form of electric car is a battery-powered car like this Leaf. These use battery packs mounted on the floor to power the electric motor, meaning that there aren't any emissions produced by the car itself. So we've been told that the future is in electric cars, but can the UK's grid cope with the incoming wave of electricity? Statistics from the Department of Transport show that by October last year, there were only 30 charging stations in Lincoln, and only two of those are fast chargers, despite last year, sales of electric cars increasing by over 200%. And while electric cars may not produce any emissions on the road, they rely on heavily pollutant power stations and use batteries, including cobalt, which is a heavily mined resource. So is the future of electric cars really as green as we've been promised? Andrew Norris, LSG Weekly. An update on the new coronavirus outbreak now. A former University of Lincoln student has been in quarantine for 14 days. He spoke to our reporter Sammy Ramsbottom from Beijing, which is on lockdown due to the outbreak. This view is the first thing I see every morning when I wake up, and um, it has been for the last 14 days. Only on a handful of occasions have I actually stepped outside, uh, either to go to the supermarket, uh, take the trash out, or uh, go to the main gates at the south side of my building complex to pick up something as none of the delivery guys, whether it be food delivery or package deliveries, are allowed in the complex whatsoever. When going out, the government advises that you wear a mask. So uh, this is the one that I've gone with. Um, surgical masks are fine because uh, the biggest and most important thing you have to avoid is germs. This is no different from any other flu. So as you can see, there's always a guard. Nobody who isn't allowed in can't come in. And uh, as you step outside, you'll see most of the doors are quite closed and You've got your guards here. There have been more than 28,000 cases of the coronavirus, and only 274 are in Beijing, which has a population of 21.5 million. This picture shows stats from across China. 
The red is confirmed cases. Yellow is suspected, green is recovered and black is dead. The mortality rate, however, is as low as 0.2%. I spoke to Mehmet over Skype about his thoughts on the Western media's coverage of the virus. With the Western media, I noticed recently that whenever I read any article in the Western media, it was always using hedging language, as in, oh, it's believed to be, or it could be, or it has the potential to be. But I don't want to know what it could be or has the potential to be. I want to know what it is. And that's how a lot of Western media outlets are portraying this virus by telling people what it could be so that they can over-exaggerate the numbers. Sammy Ramsbottom, LSJ News. That was our reporter, Sammy Ramsbottom, talking to Mehmet Doden in China. And now the government has announced a new £50 million fund for electric buses in cities around the UK. Local councils like Lincoln are now able to bid for the funding to help pay for buses. The government wants all public transport vehicles in the UK to be electric by 2025. And a mental health service in Lincoln has been saved from closure by a grant of £185,000 from the National Lottery in celebration of its 34th birthday. Involve at Lincoln offers counselling, training and support for people suffering from mental health and aims to tackle homelessness. Volunteers at the centre said the money will be used to refurbish and improve the centre. £60,000 is going to the purchase of the building, £45,000 is going to the renovation of the building and £80,000 is going to poor costs. Uh, the, fu the future of the centre is that it just wants to continue doing what it's doing at the moment, which is um, helping people with their mental health, preventing you know, um, people taking their own lives. Work is due to start on the second phase of the Bolton Park restoration project in Lincoln. The £1.2 million project, which is funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, will focus on improving biodiversity and restoring the historic lake. Here's Nikita Sasha Manate with more. Work is to begin here at Booton Park on the second phase of this multi-million pounds project. The works here have already seen the park introduce a cafe, glass house, as well as restoring the old stable block, making room for an education centre. Activities, including boating, will also return after approval from city councillors. The work taking place here could take up to a year to complete and will focus on restoring the lakes and banks as well as the woodland. This is a really exciting project that's going to bring out the best uh, wildlife results for Booton Park. It's very much a place that people want to come to and enjoy, but at the same time it can be a haven for wildlife as well. So this is the second phase of a project that first of all concentrated on the buildings and the landscaping uh, to create um, a space that people can enjoy, but this is adding icing to that cake. The £1.17 million project is the latest development in a larger scheme focusing on improving biodiversity. But why is this necessary? I think actually it's not just the fact that it's Booton Park, I think there's, there's now a regeneration across all parks in the country, you see many restoration projects, not the same as ours but similar to ours, funded in a, in a similar way by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And I think it's important to open up as many green spaces as it's possible for people to come and enjoy. We've become, rightly or wrongly, a society that's become uh, almost glued to our uh, couches and watching the television, but providing a space like this where children come out and play, play football or run around with the families, really I think it enhances and develops the area more socially. The project will allow more opportunities for people to get involved here at Booton Park. Nikita Sasha Manate, LSJ Weekly. Alternative healthcare options are available in Lincoln. The Cultivate shop offers healthcare in the form of tea, yoga and workshops to help relieve the stress of everyday life. Our reporter Sophie Bell has more. As January health trends draw to an end, maybe you're looking for a new way to help promote your wellness. Cultivate, the new shop in Lincoln, offers a variety of alternative healthcare for everyone to enjoy. Creating a space where people could feel like they could just come and get like five or ten minutes of peace and quiet. Um, and just be like in a really lovely, calm, supported environment and if they had any questions or they wanted to kind of come in and have a chat about anything, um, then they felt that they had that place to go to. Cultivate offers the community a space to come and relax with herbal treatment available to take home. 
Three months ago, when the shop opened, Emery launched a crowdfunder page, which allows the public to donate money to pay for someone else to enjoy alternative healthcare treatment where they otherwise would be unable to afford it. And wanted to keep the crowdfunder completely separate for um, creating a community wellbeing fund, which basically is essentially a pot of money that we can um, uh, have to help um, anybody in Lincoln's like community access alternative um, healthcare or well-being classes or yoga workshops um, and by doing that not only is it kind of um, putting the money back into our local um, like economy but you can also support um, other um, like independent businesses. Using alternative healthcare can benefit physical and mental well-being while keeping you in touch with the natural world. From coffee, essential oils and personalised tea being available in store, to yoga classes and workshops being held on numerous days of the week, there are many healthcare options available. Three weekly yoga classes and one meditation class. Um, and then we do different workshops every other weekend. So we've got, um, coming up, we've got a healing, um, we, uh, beginner's healing workshop. Um, we have, we do herbal tea. Um, meditations in here as well. The donations allow Emily and practitioners that she is working with to share their alternative healthcare to all of those who may need it. A lot of people maybe uh, are on the edge of or you know really just starting to find out a little bit more about many different the many different things of health and wellness because I think we need it now more than ever um, because our lives are just so stressful that we are trying to find alternative ways to just bring a bit of peace and calm into our lives. So if you want to improve your well-being, perhaps consider alternative healthcare. Sophie Bell, LSJ Weekly. We must add that although these healthcare options are good, NHS England says that you consult your GP if you are suffering with any problems. Still to come, Kira Best explains what is happening in the world of sport. She'll have all the details for Michael Appleton's press conference this morning. And the High Street in Lincoln is getting a makeover. Lincoln Business Improvement Group wardens have started removing chewing gum from the street. The group has invested £8,000 this year to complete the work. Carter Jones reports. This is the usual scene on Lincoln High Street during the day. People going about their everyday lives, doing their shopping, meeting up with friends. But this is what it looks like at 6 o'clock in the morning. Maintenance workers starting their shifts to ensure the high street is ready for the busy day ahead. Lincoln Business Improvement Group have started their clean-up of the high street from chewing gum that is left by people who use the streets every day. They're using a so-called gum buster to remove thousands of pieces of dried gum that is on the streets of Lincoln. The machine uses detergent and steam and can remove up to 700 pieces of gum per hour. Yeah, the, the gum machine uh, is a vital piece of equipment at the moment. Um, the high street over the years has got inundated with chewing gum. Um, a lot of people still eat it. I stopped eating it when I was left school, really. Uh, you know, it's made partly of a plastic resin of some kind and that's why it sticks to the uh, the slabs in in the high street so uh, it's desperate desperately need to clear the high street the machine uses detergent and steam and can remove up to 700 pieces of gum per hour it comes as lincoln st mark's shopping center has installed gum drop bins lincoln big say they want to install these across the city carter jones lsj weekly now, LGBT History Month is being celebrated throughout the month of February in selected countries around the world to highlight the history of the people behind civil and LGBT rights. The annual event began in 1994 over in the United States and has since migrated to other countries, but it's not yet celebrated worldwide. Our reporter Grace Thompson brought the awareness event a little closer to home by finding out how young people in Lincoln kicked off the month. February marks the start of LGBT History Month, which is celebrated in Hungary, the United States, Australia and here in the United Kingdom. I've come to the University of Lincoln Students' Union to find out how they're celebrating. The student-led group runs as part of the Campaigns Network here at the University and creates multiple campaigns throughout the year. This year's committee is led by second-year student Jacob Ford, who has been the LGBT Plus officer for the last two years. So the thing we're trying to get the most is getting student feedback um, because all of us that sort of work 
um, within the Campaigns Network have our own experiences, um, but it doesn't necessarily um, sort of represent all the students, it doesn't necessarily cover their experiences. So sort of getting that feedback, seeing what we can work on, um, and just making students feel included. Little things like raising the flag outside of the Students' Union is sort of like a, a symbol that we are representing, we are supporting, um, and that this is a safe space. Events are being held across the month which are set to support those from different communities and groups with the aim of bringing the student community closer together. The opening discussion event was supported by the LGBT Plus Committee as well as special guest Princess Lauren Tamu who represents black, Asian and minority ethnicity students across Lincoln. I think just to feel, just so students and staff see that they're represented. So that it is about the students, we are here for the students, we wouldn't be here without the students. So I think for students to feel welcomed when they come to university and to feel like they're included in a part of a bigger society within their university is really important. The university will be supporting the campaign group for the rest of February and we'll be catching up at the end of the month to see how they got on. Grace Thompson, LSJ Weekly. Did you know that Prime Minister's Questions aired live yesterday with an interpreter using British Sign Language? No, it didn't, but I am surprised that it's taken this long, actually. Here's Elsa Adams with more information about yesterday's programme. Prime Minister's Question Time has been streamed live with the British Sign Language for the first time this week in a move to be more inclusive for people with hearing impairments. An interpreter was shown on a split screen from an in-house studio at the House of Commons for the full 30 minutes as part of a pilot trial to make PMQs more accessible. The programme was broadcast live online on Parliament TV and their YouTube channel, allowing people to catch up at any point. It's still unconfirmed whether or not this will be continued through every recording, but it seems to be a step in the right direction. The new common speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, said he was delighted that deaf people would now be able to follow the questions. Twitter reaction was generally positive, with British Deaf Association tweeting, Great to see a clear commitment from the House of Commons to have proceedings accessible and as clear as possible. Others made light of the situation. Twitter user Gary Pike said, How on earth do you sign Bozo and his inane ramblings? Really pity the poor soul who gets that gig. Elsa Adams there. Ahead of tomorrow's match, Lincoln City manager Michael Appleton has been given a press conference. Here's Kira Best with all the sport. In the last few hours, Premier League clubs have voted to change the date of the summer transfer window to the 1st of September. This is to fall in line with other major European leagues. Now here in Lincoln we have an action-packed weekend of sport. Lincoln City manager Michael Appleton says his team are still a long way from where he wants them to be as they prepare for their Friday night fixture against Rotherham. Despite a busy transfer window, Appleton hopes by this time next year his side will have improved. We are we're so far away from where I want to be. Um, hopefully this time next year when we're speaking, just after the January window of next season, uh, uh, you know we're in a place where Hopefully similar to what Rotherham are now, where you, you're looking to really push on again and, and um, try and do something really special in the second half of the season. But where we are is that we're in a position now where we we have to stay strong, resolute, and, and like I say, make sure that we're really competitive and we're, we're, we're fighting hard. League One leaders Rotherham travelled to the LNAR Stadium unbeaten in their last two games. The Imps will be hoping to change their fortunes, having been unlucky in recent fixtures, having now not taken three points from a game since the 18th of January. The Imps currently sit 14th in League One. On Saturday, non-league side Lincoln United travel to Harrison Park, where they face League Town. League Town currently sit at the top of the Northern South East Division, with the Whites sitting towards the bottom of the table in 16th. The Staffordshire side will be a tough opponent for United, with them having won all of their last five matches, with the Whites only having won two. Lincoln City women are also away from home this weekend, travelling to Baldmere St Michael's on Sunday, where they will face Birmingham and West Midlands. The Imps are currently fifth in Midlands Division 1, with their rivals on Sunday five points above them in second. And in hockey, both Linden Hockey men's and ladies first team are in action on Saturday. The men's team are at home to Ben Riding, with the ladies' first team travelling to Wilmslow. The ladies will be looking for a win after having not won their last two fixtures. 
The men will be also looking for a win after losing their last match to Chester last Saturday. It's now time for our LSJ trending segment with Sammy Ransbottom and Nikita Natasha Manate. Social media has been booming from pizzas to red carpets and we're here to give you the lowdown on what's been happening for the last seven days. Twitter was obsessed with the BAFTA's red carpet this year, spotting the poshest frocks and dapper suits and discussing acceptance speeches from the winners. One speech which hit the headlines as well as the Explore page was Joaquin Phoenix's acceptance speech after winning Best Actor at this year's awards. He mentioned, I have to say that I also feel conflicted because so many of my fellow actors that are deserving don't have the same privilege. One Twitter user said, wow, I was not expecting that from Joaquin Phoenix, but this needed to be said. Another user tweeted their thoughts saying, thank you, Joaquin Phoenix, for pointing out the elephant in the room. Calling all the chicken and pizza lovers, have you heard of the latest collaboration with Pizza Hut and KFC? Well, the KFC Popcorn Chicken Pizza was released earlier this week and is a thing of morning after night out dreams. But it wasn't as well received as it was hoped. One user rated it a 4 out of 10 and said, edible, but won't order again. And in Lincoln, one of the members of the public posted in a local Facebook group saying that it wasn't the one for them and was offering to half, sell half of it to anyone who wanted it. Bringing back the trends to something more local, um, we spotted these friendly faces under the hashtag Lincolnshire. German, Re German Shepherd Rescue are looking for people to foster in the area. You can see different dogs who are looking for their forever home, including Dylan and Bailey. Check out their Twitter page at GS Rescue Elite for more information or to look at cute dogs, it's up to you. Oh. <laughs> and finally, did you see this making the rounds on Facebook? People are deciding to put butter into their coffees in order to increase their metabolism. Now, I know that butter and milk are in the same food group, but is this really necessary? However, you can't use just any old butter. It has to be grass-fed, unsalted butter to reach the full effect. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to be trying this anytime soon. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all from this week on LSJ Trending. What's been happening with you on social media? If you want your social media moments to be featured on next week's episode, just use the hashtag LSJ Weekly. Now back to you in the studio. Now time for the weather with Martina Vieca. This morning across this country there was some sunshine and light winds with fog patches lurking around. The same was here in Lincoln with some frost left from overnight. However, that has cleared into a beautiful and bright afternoon with long sunny spells and maximum temperature of 8 degrees. So do make sure you catch some of this beautiful weather. However, tonight is not looking the same. There will be some frost and minimum temperature of 0 degrees. So do make sure you wrap up warm if you're planning to go out. Um, tomorrow morning will be another beautiful and a dry day with some sunny spells however in the afternoon you might see some it might become a little bit cloudy with maximum temperature of 8 degrees arriving into the weekend will be storm Kira with some strong rain and strong gusts of wind reaching as high as 80 miles per hour That's almost it here from the team on LSJ Weekly. But just before we go, here's what's coming up on next week's show. I've had one bad experience where, because they have a mobile app, it didn't sync up to the app, so I didn't know I had a payment due, so I didn't put any money aside for it. We're talking about money and our finances. Are buy now, pay later credit schemes drawing us to unsustainable debt, or are we just managing it just fine? And are we using our cards more than cash? You can join in a conversation and get involved in these stories. You can find us on Twitter at LSJ Tweets or find us on Facebook and Instagram at LSJ News TV. Well, we hope you have a very good evening. Bye, Bye for, for now. now.